Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to look at a budget friendly 24 inch monitor from our friends over at Acer. This is the ET241Y. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a budget friendly monitor from Acer. This is the ET241Y, and this is a entry level monitor. 24 inch monitor it is a IPS screen, so that's in plane switching, which essentially means it's got some great viewing angles and also really great color characteristics. This is a 1080p panel, so 1920 by 1080 resolution, and it will support resolutions less than that. But for me personally, I think 1080p at 24 inches is pretty much the sweet spot for most visuals. This is going to be good for watching movies, spreadsheets, all those kinds of things. For gaming, Games, you obviously can run on it, but it's not aimed at gamers. It's only a 60 hertz panel with a four millisecond response time, so it's not the fastest one out of the gate, but can still get the job done. So as this is a entry level monitor and has a very limited feature set. Connectivity wise, we've only got two ports for monitors. That is a standard VGA port and also an HDMI port. There's also a power socket and that is pretty much it. This particular model doesn't have display port, any built-in speakers or anything else like that. This is it. very, very simple, very, very straightforward, but very, very cheap. Also, as far as the limitations go, there's no height adjustment on there, no rotation, and all you've got is a five to 20 degree viewing angle shift on the panel. So there is a little bit of adjustment on it. But what I do like about it is the fact that the bezels are extremely narrow. It looks pretty stylish and it gets the job done. The stand itself is very straightforward, very strong, and is pretty stable on the desk. Another nice feature is at the bottom of the stand, there's actually a little groove there so you can use it for storing things such as uh, perhaps a pen. Now this monitor is suitable for most uses. You can connect it up to your PC, or perhaps maybe connect it up to your laptop. If you're a home worker and you're currently struggling to see your tiny 14 or 15 inch screen, or maybe even your tablet screen, then why not upgrade your visuals? Adding this with an HDMI port and the appropriate connectors gives you a whole new experience and also can reduce things like eye strain. This monitor does support things like the anti-blue light technology and anti-flicker, so you can look at it for long periods without getting that fatigue that we get. At the moment, I've got this connected up to my Acer laptop and this is absolutely a fantastic setup. For me personally, when I get home and I wanna answer some emails or maybe answer some questions from the YouTube comment section, it's a really nice thing to have my laptop running with certain things and maybe I can switch over and drag over one of my windows over onto the big screen to have a better look. How simple is that? So I can have my productivity, maybe a spreadsheet, that kind of thing on the laptop, but have something else in the background. Now you'll probably find that the screen on the camera has actually gone quite dark and I look darker than I normally do. The reason behind this is the brightness of the screen. Now it's only rated at 250 CD slash M2, which is basically 250 nits. But even though it is a relatively low standard for monitors these days, where you can get up to 350 units quite easily, it actually does put out a fair amount of light. And as you can see from the camera, it has adjusted the ISO of the camera accordingly. But possibly you're not gonna be looking at websites and spreadsheets and that kind of thing with this bright white background. Maybe you're gonna watch in a movie. So let's drag over another window. And there we have Back to the Future. So if we take a look, quick look at this, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. The color reproduction, the colors is super vivid. The colors really do pop. I don't know whether it's coming across on the camera, hopefully it is, but this does look fantastic. There's no gradients in the colors. It just looks really, really good. There's actually very, very limited motion blur on this. Surprisingly for the money, they've managed to make a fantastic product. And even with slightly more fast moving scenes, it still flows really, really nicely. And even with this, where you've got a lot of different changes in the angle of the cameras, that kind of thing, it still looks really, really good. And even with the brighter lighting effects and the multicolors, it still looks excellent and is super, super sharp. So for watching movies, excellent, no qualms whatsoever. It's unfortunate that it hasn't got any speakers built in. I think for standalone use, if you're using it with a dedicated PC or some other kind of media device, maybe a PlayStation, Xbox, that kind of thing, not having speakers may be a little bit of a drawback, but obviously with HDMI, there are things you can get, adapters, etc., so you can divert the signal, or you can just add your own speakers to whatever device it is. Now, I suppose really we should discuss pricing. Now, at the moment in the UK, you can pick up one of these for less than £100, which I think is phenomenal value for money. 
If for some reason you really want to step up your game a little bit and maybe get a free sync compatible monitor, you can always go for one of the Nitro models like we've reviewed, which you can check out up here. But for me personally, for maybe a home worker, if maybe you're furloughed or whatever and you're working from home and you've got your works laptop but you're really struggling to see the screen, adding something like this I think is going to be an absolute blessing. It's so easy to see and as we all get to a certain age, our eyesight does deteriorate a little bit so rather than getting out the specs, maybe get yourself a slightly larger monitor such as this one. So let's stop the video right there and there is a couple of things which really annoy me about this monitor and if I didn't put it in I think it would be doing you all a disservice. Now it is a minor thing but for me it is an irritation so I want to let you know about it. The on-screen display and the menu control on this monitor is horrendous. There's no other way of putting it, it is awful. The buttons are on the back of the monitor so you can't actually see which one is which and if you accidentally press the wrong one well, you turn off the screen. There's nothing obvious there. It would have been really nice for them to put the power button at the bottom, maybe with the power LED, that would have made a great deal of sense. So looking at the on-screen display, so there's five buttons on the back, one of them's the power button, and you work from the top down. So the top button brings up the menu, and then you can go through and go through all your on-screen displays, all that kind of stuff. Press the button again, and it selects what it is. Now it does tell you on the side here which button is which, and for moving up and down through the menu, etc., and how to select. So it's not entirely rocket science, but it is a little frustrating. So to get into various menus, like changing the power, etc., and the type of display, is a little bit kind of, well, 1990s, to be completely honest with you. I would have much rather seen something like the Samsung monitors, where you've got one of those joysticks on the back, which you can control quite easily. For me, this is a pain, it really is. But having said that, once you've set it to your complete settings and to your satisfaction, chances are you're never going to touch it again. You may want to use the power button, turn the monitor on and off, but I would imagine most people are just going to leave it on or leave it in standby. If you are leaving it in standby mode, it does sip power. This is an A-rated monitor, so it's not going to burn through your electricity. And even with the screen on at full brightness, it only draws around about 18 watts of power, which isn't a great deal in the big scheme of things. So anyway, back to the video. So there you go, that pretty much sums it up. It's a simple monitor with a simple price and it just does what it's meant to do. So let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. If you wanna pick one up for yourself, there will be affiliated links in the description below so you can check them out and see what the local pricing is like in your region. But for now, this wraps things up. This is the Acer ET241Y. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a budget monitor from Acer. This is the ET241Y, because it's on my desk. <laughs> I couldn't do that.